Did you know that the word axolotl pronounced in Nahuatl, the native Aztec language, is axolot, which means water monster or water dog? Hello everybody, this is KC here at the Phoenix Herpetological Sanctuary. Today we're gonna to be going over to a follow-up video on the care of axolotls. These animals were brought to us as surrendered pets. The individuals who brought them to us were unable to keep them further simply because the care was a little too much that they could handle. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go through the steps of what it takes to feed these animals, clean these animals, the stressors that go into taking care of them and making sure they get everything that they need. Let's go ahead and get started. Cohabitation with these animals is very particular. As salamanders, these animals are constantly looking for things to eat and that's pretty much anything that can fit in their mouths, including other axolotls. So it's very important to remind yourself that these are not just like a species you can put anything in with, because even though they're adorable, they will try and consume most animals that you try to put in with them. So that being said, when we go ahead and look at these animals, we're doing our best to remember that if it can fit in their mouth, they'll probably eat it. So that's including fish, small invertebrates like shrimps, and then even other axolotls are on the menu. So when you're keeping axolotls, it's important to remember to keep stress levels down to a minimum. As a specialized species, it is important to give them basic care it takes to make sure that we are giving them the least amount of stress. So that's including water temperature, water chemistry, the right diet, and a huge factor of this is actually lighting. So in our habitat, we actually have gone along the sides of it and blacked it out, and we have a low blue light to illuminate the enclosure itself so you can still see the animals, but it's important to reduce that as these animals are normally in very dark environments. So caves or the bottoms of rivers and lakes, we wanna emulate that to reduce the amount of stress. It is important for them to have somewhere to hide. These animals are not really high on the food chain where they come from, so it's important for them to go underneath rocks or a piece of grass that might give them some cover. So it's important when you set up their habitats that they might have a hide or a stack of rocks that won't fall over on them so they can feel safe and hidden from any would-be predators. It is important to remember that when maintaining an aquatic environment that the filters that you have on the enclosure are clean regularly. Now after this system has acclimated or cultured itself with the bacteria, you won't have to do that as much. But I do it monthly just to keep it nice and happy and healthy. It's important when taking care of any aquatic system that you're doing regular water changes. Now as the habitat cultures and the bacteria grows in it, you won't have to do as many, but it's still good husbandry practice to make sure that you're constantly doing water changes because you're replenishing fresh water. So I'm gonna go ahead and do what's called a gravel back or sand sift, and that's just removing any waste out of the sander on top of it that could deteriorate the chemistry within the enclosure. Now in the habitat, you also notice that we've got a lot of aeration. This is important for salamanders as they will breathe through their skin, and more importantly, through those gills, the fluffy little appendages off the sides of their head to absorb oxygen. So if we don't have oxygen in the water, these animals' gills will get longer and they will stress out. So that's actually a really good indicator of how happy these animals are is the length of their gills. So the longer they are usually means they have less oxygen in the water and the shorter they are means that we have a lot of oxygen in the water, which is really good for them. So when we're adding water, it's just as important to remember the chemistry going in as it is coming out. When I'm putting water into this bucket, I'm gonna add a little bit of dechlorinator. That's gonna take some of the chlorine out of the water and they'll make it safe for the animals when this water goes back into the habitat. So now that the water has had time to sit, we know it's dechlorinated and it is safe to put into the habitat. It's also important to remember not to dump it all in at once as the water is room temperature and the enclosure 65 degrees. So by letting it enter slowly, we can let the chiller do what it needs to do as the water is being poured in and cool it down. Observe, four year degree, 10 years of professional experience, all comes down to pouring water. Enjoy. Axolotls are a cold blooded species of amphibian. These animals only require so much food to go into their body in order to do their metabolic processes. It's a big word for saying the energy they need to move. 
So, as an ectothermic animal, they require the ambient temperature to do their processes. But since they're cold water, they don't have to have as much food in order to do that. So, as a cold-blooded species in a cold environment, they don't need as much energy in order to do what they need to do. All right, it is very important to offer a variety of food to your axolotl. That way it's receiving all the vitamins, proteins, and amino acids that are required for this animal to grow. So at the sanctuary, we have an assortment of food, including silver side fish, krill, and a pelleted diet that we get from any of the retail pet stores that they are labeled for axolotls. Cool water, this will give them a chance to defrost, and it makes it a lot easier to feed the animals themselves. So we'll give that about five minutes, and it'll be ready to be cut up into small pieces and offered to the animals. It's important that when you're preparing these items, that they're big enough that the animal can swallow it in one piece without choking the animal. Although taking care of axolotls is intensive, we enjoy having them here at the sanctuary. We especially love seeing all the joy it brings to our guests when they are on a tour. But it's important to remember that axolotls are critically endangered. In fact, there are less than a thousand of them in their natural habitat. So please, if you have an axolotl, take care of it to the best of your ability. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel. And as always, thank you for watching.